and they're out. Okay. I'm recording additionally as a backup. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining the community develop and budget prior development and budget priority priorities committee meeting for uh, Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. My name is Serena Muniz and I am the chair of this committee and I'm also joined by Mr. Malcolm Gray. He'll introduce himself. He is, I, I just introduced him. He's our co-chair. I'm sorry, Malcolm. It's fine. <laughs> Hello. Um, we're being joined tonight by the Department of City Planning and, um, you know, uh, uh, this, this committee, um, from what, um, I believe, um, hasn't met in a while. And from my understanding, hasn't met in a while, and we're happy to start meeting more regularly. Um, we invited the Department of city planning, uh, to join us so that we can start, um, with the very basics from the, I guess, from the very bottom, um, so that we could all, um, be of, uh, understanding of how the budget works and the priority in the district needs works, um, not just for the committee, but for the community at large. And so we thought it would be the best way to start our 1st, um, committee meeting in this way. So we're being joined by, um, Katie, Nick, and I believe is, um, ton. Uh, please forgive me if I did not. Oh, that's Okay. Um, oh, perfect. <laughs> um, and um, they they they're going to walk us through the process so that as a community board and as a committee, we know what to expect, how to go about doing it, and um, you know, taking it from there from um, starting now through the whole entire year. So if anyone wants to start, um, we can we can just start from here. So uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, if that's okay, Tun, was there anything you wanted to say before Nick and I jump in? No, I think I think that's the that that's good. It's just um, I think for for everyone's knowledge, I'm the uh, I'm I'm a senior planner in the Bronx office at BCP, and you know I've been attending a lot of uh, community board eleven meetings since I'm uh, your community board liaison at the Department of City Planning, and and yeah, I hand it over to. Uh, Katie and Nicholas, um, they have uh, some materials prepared for tonight. Yeah, thank thank you. Um, so we, uh, Nick and I are part of a small team. There's only one other person on our team, and we make up the planning support division in the central DCP office. And one of our roles is to facilitate this annual community district needs and budget requests process. Um, so I'm going to give an overview of what this process entails. Um, kind of funny timing because we just completed a really key milestone and the community board completed really a really key milestone in kind of our annual cycle. But uh, it is never too early to start preparing for next year. Um, and this, uh, we're very glad to have uh, have you invite us at this point and talk about how um, this committee can be prepped for, for next year. So I'm going to try to share my screen. Let me um get to this you see my powerpoint here yes yes great uh, okay can you can you enlarge it at all uh is it taking up only part of the screen mm -hmm. yeah it's like kind of small oh okay let me see how i can do this um i think you might also have the option to zoom in on your own screen i just zoomed in on my screen to show a little bit I You're correct. To... It's zoomed in. Thank you. Perfect. Is that okay? Because I can change to presentation mode and you tell me. Do you still oh, see it? Oh, better. That's, that's even better. Okay, you can still see it. Good. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was going to work. I don't always use WebEx, but um, we have about 15 minutes of content to go through. Um, some of this is going to feel familiar, I know, to at least some of you because you did just go through kind of the key community board portion of it. Um, but for the benefit of anybody that's catching up on this or is going to be involved next year, I'll just go through everything um, that I have really briefly. And we think we'll be talking for about 15 minutes. Um, I'm also aware that you wanted to talk, I think, specifically about the possibility of facilitating a survey for um, community input next year. So we'll save time specifically for that. Um, my colleague Nick um, has worked on that in a couple of formats. Um, uh, but let's jump into it. The overview of community district needs and budget requests process. 
Um, so the important thing to understand about this, this uh, process is that it's just a couple of months a year for community boards, um, but it combines, it, it, it covers two critical community board uh, responsibilities. Um, when community boards were added by city charter in 1975, there were two responsibilities uh, that related to, um, you know, the, the process that we're undertaking now. Um, one was a requirement of an annual statement of needs. And the other uh, is an annual uh, community board budget request. So a list of specific items that uh, the community board would like to see in the city's following annual budget. Um, and in the last few years, um, DCP and OMB have worked together to unite these charter mandated requirements of community boards and facilitate kind of a, a single step process um, wherein each community board has the opportunity to uh, submit a, a form that covers both of these uh, requirements of the community board. Um, so just a quick overview of both of them, the statement of community district needs element uh, is uh, the description of the needs of the district that year and an opportunity for the community board to recommend programs to respond to those needs. Uh, essentially, it's establishing the context. Um, uh, what are the needs that are going to dictate the community board's specific budget requests in the next portion? Um, and it's really an opportunity for uh, better engagement and advocacy with key stakeholders like city agencies or elected officials or developers of land use applications. Um, and, and this is because it results in a document where the community board has come together and said, uh, these are our key needs. Um, you know, we believe your project is or is not responding to these needs, but they're documented and, you know, you can, we can teach you about our community board using this, our community district, uh, and what, and what we want and need and how we see our future, uh, using this document. Um, the community board budget requests are also part of the same form. Um, and they can be, uh, I think, a little bit trickier for community boards to kind of um, come to consensus on because they have a lot of uh, specific kind of components that we'll get into. We'll show some examples later on. Um, but essentially, they are a list every year of expense and capital requests that you identify and direct to specific city agencies. Um, OMB guidance says that you can have, uh, it'd be effective to have up to 40 capital requests and 25 expense requests. Um, the numbers that I have uh, in red there uh, are what was submitted this year by Bronx 11. So you're, uh, you know, under the the um, kind of allotted or recommended amount. Um, that's not you know, a critique in any way. Um, it can be very helpful to have 15 very thoughtful capital requests rather than a, a long list. Um, uh, but uh, just to identify kind of where you fit in the, with those recommendations, uh, you submitted 15 capital requests and 12 expense requests this year. Um, we don't have responses to this request. I'll get to the timeline in a second, but I have some summary things throughout about what you just submitted, but we're still within the cycle of, you know, we haven't gotten responses to those requests yet. Um, uh, so there's opportunities, there was opportunities before you submitted those budget requests to consult with agencies um, and also uh, time to gather public input. I think that's kind of what you're interested in talking more about for the future for, with that survey, for example. Um, and each of those budget requests, um, part of the process is that you prioritize them. So you say, this is our number one most important request through this is number 15, not that it's not important, but it, there's 14 capital requests that outrank it. Um, so that's that's just part of the exercise and also something that can be challenging for, for boards to come to consensus on, so it's good to plan for in advance. Uh, so where we are in the um, the city's budget timeline, um, this uh, this process of creating your what we call in shorthand CD priorities um, is the, kind of our shorthand for the full statement. Um, it, it happens uh, kind of before the following, right before the following year's um, budget is established. So typically in the summer this year in August, um, we opened up the website where you submit the statements um, and the budget requests. Uh, the deadline was October 31st. I'm happy to note here that Bronx 11 submitted on time. We do always have straggler boards um, that have trouble um, getting, you know, whether it's votes or um, just doing doing the um, uh, work that's required to decide what's going to go in their statement um, before that deadline. But thank you very much. This team definitely submitted on time this year, and we'd like to keep that up in future years. 
Um, but the next step is that uh, the agencies actually draft their responses to uh, those budget requests and deliver them to OMB. So all the budget requests are delivered to agencies, agencies draft responses, and then uh, the following portion outside of the box is all how uh, relates to how those uh, budget requests are incorporated into the larger city citywide budget. So in January, um, we'll see, we expect to see the preliminary budget published, and that's the point at which there will be preliminary responses to uh, each of your budget requests, um, whether the agency believes they can fund it the following year or not. Then there's various uh, stages of refining the city's budget until uh, it's uh, implemented uh, in the fiscal, the beginning of the fiscal year, which starts next, uh, next July. Um, so there's still quite a lot to come before final decisions are made, but um, the period where the community board is most active on this request has just passed. Um, I'm not going to go through this in detail. Um, it's a little more helpful for uh, when you're kind of in the midst of the process. Um, but these are the key steps that typically community boards are are taking and and DCP are taking um, in the months leading up to that October 31st deadline. Um, they involve things like uh, attending your borough budget consultations, um, it, determining whether working groups or an executive committee are going to be making the decisions on what the content of your uh, budget requests and your seating needs statement are, um, getting that final vote, um, if that's part of your procedure, and submitting by the 31st. Um, now, where we are now in the November to December section, uh, I mentioned OMB is distributing those budget requests to the appropriate agencies. Um, uh, we are at DCP preparing reports um, uh, for agencies to review that kind of summarize. Here's the key uh, the key items that were, um, uh, you know, highlights uh, real big priorities for your agency to consider for this this year. Um, to the extent that it impacts your your budget decisions, um, here's the policies that that community boards really care about for your agency. Uh, and then the agencies. Uh, provide those responses to those preliminary budget requests. They have a really tight deadline too. Um, they have to get those drafts, draft responses in by December 15th. Um, so I'll go through what the submission uh, in the form actually involves. There are three distinct uh, important sections that uh, you undertake when you fill out this form. Um, there are The first is um, what we call the top three pressing issues. Uh, and this is where the, um, in as part of the statement of community district needs, the community board identifies what are the top three kind of policy issues that are affecting your community district. Um, they pick them from a you pick them from a drop down menu. You can select an option that's other, um, but otherwise you you pick um, from a broad range of pre set um, drop downs uh, of uh, of kind of policy issues that you might encounter. Um, and then you provide brief narratives that give context um, to explain why those are your top issues. Um, so before I go into the other sections, um, just give an example. Um, so this was from a couple of years ago, this was a community board in Brooklyn. Um, they selected top three issues were economic development and recovery, land use trends, and schools. Um, and under each of those, they had uh, a robust explanation of what that category meant to them and why it was an issue to that board. Um, the, the text that's excerpted here um, is part of their narrative that they provided on economic development and recovery. Um, so this was uh, kind of, uh, I guess, the, the first year of, um, of COVID. This was the fall when they were submitting it. Um, they're saying New York City has made a commitment to opening 100 miles of streets to allow greater social distancing during COVID-19. Um, this is good for them. They say opening up the streets provides not only more resources for people and cyclists, but it also allows more space for restaurants and small businesses in the district to have outdoor dining, uh, which is now here to stay in New York City, in their opinion. Um, uh, they, they, you know, they would go on to say what your kind of recommendation as a um, a policy, um, what your need and, and your recommendation for for policy would be. So I presume that the rest of this statement was saying like this helped our businesses that were otherwise struggling, and we'd like to, um, you know, make sure it continues for the for the future or something. Um, you'd have to go back and see their full statement, but um, this is relatively reflective of of the kinds of uh, narratives that um, that we might see in uh, in descri describing a top three issue. It's kind of addressing something borough wide, a major uh, policy that they believe uh, has been you know, positive or negative. 
Uh, the next uh, thing that a community board will tackle in this form is uh, they look that we identify seven grouped policy areas. I'll show what those policy areas are in the next slide. But in each policy area, you say what your most important issue or your kind of biggest concern is. And again, there's there's a lengthy drop down menu of options and you provide explanations. You can select the option other and provide an explanation if you don't feel like any of the um, uh, drop down items, the policy items relate to what you want to convey. Um, but uh, the, the kind of key is that you provide a clear and robust explanation. Um, I don't have an example of the explanation here. Um, I can certainly pull, pull one, ones up um, from our, our past statements, but I think what's maybe more helpful to see here is um, these are our seven policy areas, and these are the, and below them are the agencies that are reviewing and responding to your, your concerns and your budget requests in each of those categories. So uh, typically, although not um, not universally, we know um, these seven policy areas reflect to some extent the um, structure of, uh, that community boards have their um, uh, their committees uh, addressing. Um, it, you know, I know it's not perfect, but um, it can be helpful maybe to to, to divide these sections uh, to be responsible uh, by certain committees. Um, uh, so healthcare and human services. Youth education and child welfare, public safety, core infrastructure, housing, economic development and land use, transportation, parks, cultural and community facilities. Um, you may or may not have um, uh, some committees that that already kind of focus on on one or more of these that might be best equipped to say what the biggest issue is and, and also what the budget requests are. Um, because it's also related to those seven categories where you you outline what those capital and expense requests are. Um, so under each of those seven categories, you say what your top issue is, and then you say here are my one, two, five, ten, however many um, budget requests you have related to that that policy category, um, that policy area. Um, and we'll look at an example, but keep in mind that budget requests, um, in addition to saying whether it's capital or expense and what agency it goes to. You also should try to find like specific locations and ex explanations or rationales um, and identify if you have any supporters um, for a specific request. Um, so here's an example of, of a pretty robust budget request. We'll talk about the one thing that I think is missing here. Um, this was uh, one from Bronx 7 um, a couple of years ago. Um, they say what their priority is. It's kind of middle of the road of their capital requests. They had 46 capital requests. This was number 20. Um, they, this was a selection from a category of drop down. They, they put the, the type of request was to reconstruct or upgrade a park or amenity. Um, because they selected that one, it, I, this, the system that we have identified that this is a request that's going to DPR. But this part of the um, explanation that they provided is, um, uh, is really the um, you know the portion that that's the the community board itself customized. So um, this is a pretty clear request. They're saying full reconstruction of the existing bicycle and pedestrian path is desperately needed, uh, including repaving the existing asphalt path, installing new park security lighting, and reconstructing sections of the existing riprap edge. Um, they note that there was a um, broader master plan completed that the agency can can refer to. Um, that shows work has already been done planning this um, this request. Um, I like this request. I think it's very clear to us and to an agency like Parks because it identifies a specific location and uh, groups specific um, work that's that's needed. Um, so uh, asphalt path, new new lighting, uh, riprap. Um, those are all really specific requests that um, Parks Department can now go respond to. Um, the one thing that I think is funny about this one is that they didn't list any supporters. I'd be surprised if they didn't have a, a friends of Riverside Park or an elected official that has at some point voiced the support for this need. Um, so just any information you can provide um, around a request like this is, is always helpful. Um, I, I know I just threw a lot at you. If, if you haven't gone through this process, it might just be a lot to, to put in context. Um, I'd recommend that you look back at past um, uh, statements that the board has submitted, statements of community needs and requests that the, the 
the board has submitted. Um, and I'm happy to walk you through them if you have any specific questions. But here's my big takeaways um, for uh, making sure your submissions are, are strong and, and clear um, and you know get the uh, clearest responses possible from city agencies. Um, one is start as soon as you possibly can. Um, it doesn't even need to be um, when the, that form gets open in August. Um, we'll talk about things that the board, we can talk about things the board can do prior to that, including community engagement, perhaps with a survey. Um, uh, but basically just starting early so that you can plan any votes or meetings that are needed to continue meeting that October 31st deadline, um, which is uh, likely the, the going to be the deadline for next year as well. Um, when you're writing your narratives, um, make sure they're clear, you know, know that they're they're going to get published on DCP's website. Um, so, you know, make sure they're they're edited um, for clarity. Um, and take opportunities to incorporate current data. Nick is going to show you some of our websites that um, the community boards use as data resources um, to to uh, you know note where there's like a particularly high need in in a certain policy category. Um, and then uh, through all this, you know, have clear, good, strong narratives, but keep in mind that the form that we use does have character count limits. I see several boards like draft up very, very long statements and then not be able to submit all of them, which can be a challenge. Um, so again, that's something we can work with you one on one um, just to make sure you can navigate the form and you see where there are, there are character count limits um, so that you make sure it's published as you planned. Um, we recommend that you uh, refresh any content. Um, you do receive each year last year's statement embedded in the form. Um, but we think refreshing content is a must. Um, uh, uh, a lot of times past agency uh, requests are like remain in the form um, and we recommend that you take the chance to, to remove them so that the um, agency that's responding to some of your new requests isn't kind of wasting time also responding to ones that are that were requested or that were funded in the past. Um, and uh, then that gives you more time to know which ones to focus on editing or adding. Um, and then a, a goal that I like to set for community boards that are really kind of comfortable with all of the above and prepared to address all the above is to really think about your document as one cohesive um, narrative. Uh, so it's it's really good to aim uh, for um, most important issues and top three issues that kind of naturally um, explain what what your budget request priorities are. It doesn't mean that you can't request a budget item that doesn't match exactly with you know what your top three or what your most important issue was in that category. But um, you should look at your most important issues in that prior that policy category and make sure you have budget requests that are responding to them. If they're the most important issue, um, make sure that that you've you've got budget requests that um, are are um, you know, uh, addressing them, um, and that and that can uh, be make just make this a very strong advocacy document. So um, I'm going to transition to Nick, who um, does a lot of our direct community board support um, and has familiarity with all of our data resources. Hey everyone, yeah, thanks, Katie. Um, just want to quickly highlight some of the resources that can be helpful. Uh, in sort of crafting those submissions and hitting a lot of the checking a lot of those boxes that Katie mentioned for how to make submissions stronger and uh, more robust. Um, here's a list of uh, just a few of the resources that are available online for to the public uh, that can help sort of uh, bolster those uh, those submissions. Um, basically, we've arranged this in a way that you can, you know, we'll send these slides and you can look at these later in more detail, but um, essentially there might be a number of questions you want answers to that'll help uh, better inform either the narrative sections of your submission or uh, specifically referencing why certain needs or certain priority levels, things like that. Um, and they, we have uh, sources of information you can go to to answer those questions. So, for instance, let's say uh, you needed to look back at last year's community district uh, need statement or a prior year. Uh, you know, the Katie mentioned that last year's is loaded automatically in the form. Let's say you wanted to see what you would put for a most important issue in a certain policy area two years back. Um, those are available along with a lot of other information on the community district community district profiles website. Um, really handy tool lets you click around the city and borough by borough 
borough by borough and board by board go through uh, a whole host of different demographic and other economic and social indicators and, and data um, that'll let you answer a whole bunch of questions, provide a lot of great data um, to underline some of your priorities uh, in your submission. Um, let's say you are wondering, you know, you were you were about to submit something related a budget request related to schools or to the school construction authority. Uh, where are all the schools located in the district right now? Uh, New York City's facilities explorer is sort of the handy tool for um, public and private facilities and program sites uh, that sort of fall under that category. Uh, if you could go and look up where all those schools are located, um, let's say you're looking at sort of economic development and recovery uh, in the in the uh, district and you want to know sort of where and how much and how where how the commercial land is distributed in the district uh, the zoning and land use application is a great option for that that you'll be able to look at an up-to-date zoning and land use map um, sort of click on and off all these different interactive layers to kind of see what things look like in the uh, in your community district as it stands and then let's say you had a question about how many senior citizens were living in your neighborhood or some other demographic indicator. Uh, New York City's population fact finder has all sorts of up to date census data um, that you can sort of pour over and there's really you know, almost no limit to <laughs> this, the questions you could have answered um, in through there. So uh, next slide, please. Um, Katie mentioned several times that a survey is another great resource. Um, we've had uh, experience both directly assisting some community boards in running their surveys, but also uh, just sort of maybe technical support and advising uh, community boards that were running their own surveys. And we've seen boards with success in sort of both directions. Um, so there is a, uh, a paper survey that we can provide that's sort of a you know template we've already rolled out with other community boards before that you can distribute to members of your community, members of your board um, to get information on what they feel are the most important issues in the community, maybe specific, you know, depending on how specific you want to get, there's, you know, it's really up to you if you want to add add more content there, but we do have sort of a printable version that that is readily available we can provide. Um, or you could do something online um, that that could either be in the form of the community board hosting their own survey and you could fully customize uh, what questions you're asking, what level of detail you're going into, how long you've got that open, how long are you can collecting all that public input. Um, or you could uh, reach out to us and, and we could give some assistance with, we uh, set up a survey on Microsoft Forms and not only are we able to uh, set up that survey with you and report back on what the responses are but microsoft forms also gives us a whole bunch of different uh statistical data on those responses that we provide additional analysis um to help sort of inform decisions that the board's making uh you know consequential based on the uh public input they're receiving so uh surveys uh, definitely a tool we've seen um community boards have a lot of success with uh, and uh, the sort of thing that year to year can be improved upon um, to gather more and more useful and uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, community input. Uh, next slide. Um, borough budget consultations, another major resource. Um, these typically happen earlier in the fall. And so all of those have passed now and I'm, you may or may not have been present for some of those for, um, for your community board for your borough. Um, but essentially, it's an opportunity to meet with uh, any of the city agencies that are responding to these budget requests, um, get an idea of sort of what the priorities are for those agencies. Maybe, you know, we, we've seen boards be more successful with getting um, better responses when their community uh, community board budget requests are sort of tailored to things that they already know the agency is concerned with or actively working on. Um, so it's a, a great opportunity to have dialogue with those agencies, which can sometimes be a bit tough to you know get in a room with. Uh, great opportunity to, to ask questions and, and have dialogue with those agencies to better understand how uh, your mission as a community board and their mission can be aligned. And next slide. Uh, and then the final resource we want to mention and underline and highlight and, you know, all the different ways we can <laughs> shout from the rooftops that we are here. Uh, planning support is here to help um, our little team our, is we are small, but mighty in our ability to support the board with whatever they might need uh, as it comes to navigating the online submission portal or any um, outreach and other strategies you might be looking to implement. We're always happy to, to lend a hand. Um, and so we've included this uh, this slide here with this email address that that email address will send an email to our entire team so that whichever of us is most available to help out, um, we'll all get it. 
Um, so that's a that's a great option to keep on hand in the event that um, you know you, let's you, you could just have questions about using the website that you want worked out, and we'd be we're always happy to get on a call and walk through um, those sorts of things, um, or just questions about the process in general. We are we are available and at hand. So um, I believe that is all the uh, content we've got prepared. But we I think we might have some time to answer some questions if any we have any. So I'll hand it back over to Katie. Great. Yes. Thanks, Nick. I, I would just open it up to the community board um, to let us know if you have any questions. I, we're here to talk about the survey specifically, if that's what you wanted to discuss tonight, um, or if you have any uh, general questions about the process as you prepare for next year. I think we have one question in the in the chat from. Uh, oh, I need to Janine find Zimpo. it. Can I sure. find it while I'm? sharing <laughs> i'm navigating well, I've, I've got it here, yeah why don't you let me know uh yeah um janine asked uh that whether these are just requests at the community board level or if individual residents are putting in requests without the community board knowing uh who does oh. the team work with on local political level, level city council members etc um as far as the budget requests are concerned uh that is the community board is the one submitting the budget requests to these agencies um but the public input that the um community board gathers ahead of submitting their official submission every year is sort of where the individual community residents can help inform what those budget requests look like what where certain things fall on the priority list uh, and stuff like that um and then katie i don't know if you want to speak to uh it, most of our work is really in terms of who in at the local political level we work with is really directly with the community boards um, and this team at least uh, our support is largely focused on uh, the, the community board and how we can best help facilitate the community board submitting on time and as robust of a submission as possible. Yeah, absolutely. We, this is a, this is a community board. As I mentioned, this is part of the city charters creation of community boards was, uh, you know, the, the, the impetus for this process. Um, it really is uh, your document and we have facilitated a website to, to make that happen. Um, but our direct engagement is entirely with the community boards as well as with the city agencies. So not on the political side, but on the, the actual like civil servants um, that are gonna be responding to these requests. Um, we work really directly with OMB, um, but there's not a specific city hall or elected official um, contact that, that's facilitating these. Um, I do wanna make clear it's distinct. This is not the same process as um, uh, participatory budgeting that is its own process with its own budget um uh that is it, this is not the, the process for uh, for participatory budgeting they they work towards i would say similar goals and and ends but um this uh, process cd needs has been around a, a long time and is specifically um, to facilitate uh, community board led engagement with the traditional city budget um, so not kind of an extra uh, uh, or specific fund, but the general budget. Um, and it is your community boards are the only ones with access to this form. So we are not as DCP facilitating any um, individual um, uh, resident requests. Although, as Nick mentioned, you are more than welcome to do that um, through your survey or other outreach, but it would have to go through the board before it was submitted to DCP. Awesome. So. So participatory budgeting is handled by a different office, basically. Yeah, um, and unfortunately, I can't answer a lot of questions about them specifically. Um, they, I know they've evolved a lot in the last few years, um, but this is quite enough work. CD needs is quite enough work on our plate at the moment. Sounds good. So thank you. Is this is um, for all of this, right? Are we um, are we complete? Right, we're completed with the presentation, right? We're at the questions. So, um, in terms of um, what we submitted, I believe um, CB11 submitted, um, you had jotted down 15 capital requests mm -hmm. and 12 um, expense requests, right? Um, we, with a capital request um, of a cap of 40 and 25 for expenses, um, if there were more, so, the, the question that has come up in the past from the community is that, um, and, and so just for clarity, because I know, Katie, you mentioned this, if there was um, an ask already from a previous year that was still on our budget because 
uh, for reasons that, um, you know, we, it, it says that it was funded, but, pro you know, like the ground, you know, there, there hasn't been any kind of work that has started. Um, you know, we hear tell, you know, it might be smart to keep it on, you know, our budget, right? Or, and then we also hear tell, well, if we um, received a notification that it is funded, we should take it off. So that's the kind of like, we just, I, I, I I'm asking for clarity on that yeah. because yeah. I feel like we, we need to know moving forward so that we can open up the space and give the community an opportunity to ask for the things that, that they want to ask for. Um, and so I, I, from my understanding, we had, um, and so this leads to question number two, we had 22 capital requests and 13 expense budget requests. So if, if, if that's, um, if there were things that were um, not added due to whatever reason, can we add to it now or is it too late? So um, definitely two different questions. These submissions right. are in, the agencies are, are for a month have been working to respond to them. Um, so the deadline has passed to add for this year. Um, so you're gonna get responses to those 15 capital and 13 expense. Um, that said, there are certainly other ways throughout the year to engage these agencies. If you go back and you look at your statement and you say, um, you know, this did not reflect exactly what I wanted to ask of parks or DOT or, um, you know, whoever, um, we are more than happy to, um, you know, in the springtime facilitate a discussion directly with those agencies, which can in many cases be more helpful for your specific requests, um, getting answers than, um, than the the kind of space limitations of uh, of this budget exchange. Um, so uh, there's not an opportunity to edit this year's statements, but in relation to your prior question, um, you know whether in the future you should uh, kind of opt for having more items um, because there were potentially some that said funded, but um, you know you don't necessarily um, you know believe that the funding's been complete or um, uh, you know, there may be a, an advocacy reason for the board to keep it on you. That is absolutely the board's decision. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we do recommend removing budget requests that you can verify, you know, the work has been completed, um, uh, or, um, you know, or, or the request has actually changed. Of course, um, in the case of something where, um, a, uh, a, an agency has said, um, yeah, we've already funded this, um, but you don't believe that um, you know, the funding has you know been allocated or the work has been completed. I my personal recommendation is to keep it on there, but really look for ways where you can edit and refine the request and make it specific in that explanation field that um, you know you're looking for um, you know confirmation of a schedule of completion of this capital project X Y and Z elements or um, you know, you're you're aware that partial funding has been allocated, and you're looking for information on when, uh, you know, if and when, um, you know, complete funding will be allocated. You know, whatever it is that you're specifically aware of with a with an ongoing project, um, to update the request that way um, will will be helpful to you and to the agency. Um, and then I think we'd have to look at specific requests, but I do want to note that the form does allow for capital requests to be marked um, with a checkbox for something called continued support. Um, and this is specifically for requests that um, agencies and um, uh, agencies have spoken to uh, the community board about um, that this is a multi year funded project. So when it's a large capital project and it's going to require more than one year of funding for implementation, those are continued support projects. Um, and so if you believe or if you've been told by an agency that the funding is going to be allocated over multiple years to complete a project uh, just check that box for continued support um, and again we can look at specific projects with you to see if we can get confirmation on that um, but it does um, kind of it flags for you and for the agency that there's a reason to keep it on year after year um, it's not the only way you can keep it on year after year you're welcome to not delete requests but if it's on that continued support category it'll be clearer for you and for the agency and for the public reading it um, why you see it year after year and as far as we're um, kind of refining throughout the year is that something that we would do ourselves and and kind of contact the agencies and and then update you and let you know what the response is from the agencies so uh, we let me think about that um 
We definitely want you to be keeping track of what your um, engagement with the agencies is to the extent that it's going to have bearing on your statement or your budget request, because it really is your responsibility as a board to fill in the, the form once it's open um, in the summertime. Um, so is to the extent that you're getting refined responses um, in meetings for certain agencies and they're affecting um, you know, what kind of budget requests you want to put in, um, we definitely need you to be tracking that because we're not going to be able to um, keep keep track of like uh, you know changes to specific language that you're going to be altering for all 59 community boards. Um, but where we can be involved and, and would be happy to be involved would be um, if there are budget requests where you're seeing the response from an agency and it says something like, you know, this requires follow up um, or, you know, the agency needs more information to complete this request, um, which is a relatively common response. A lot of times these requests are kind of big and complex and difficult for the agency to make a decision on in the, the few weeks that they have. Um, that's where um, if you want to engage those agencies, say in the springtime before you um, for your your finalizing your budget requests, um, loop us in, and we can be the ones to get you the make sure you have the right contacts at those agencies if you're not already in touch with them. So we are beginning to facilitate meetings with um, uh, DOT in particular is is a kind of willing and able to do those meetings in the springtime, um, and uh, you know we're 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 hoping that they'll be quite helpful. So. Um, we're happy to be coordinators in the spring with with specific agencies to help you prepare your your own future budget requests. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Um, I think that's I think this has been very helpful. I definitely am going to go back and watch this <laughs> over <Okay. laughs> again for myself because it's just a a lot of information, a lot of worthwhile information, and um, I believe it's going to be um, beneficial to all of us, the community board and the community at large. Um, as far as the uh, Microsoft Form survey, that was um, something that we wanted to offer um, our community as well. Um, we thought that perhaps we start there with the survey and um, try that out first. Um, I like the fact that there um, that assists with statistical data that will then help us determine what our budgetary priority levels will be in the future. Um, and then we can tailor that according to the responses that we're getting from the community, right? So I think we can start there. And so um, then, you know, we'll put that uh, on our website, right? Will that uh, be a direct kind of hyperlink on our website um, that, that we, you can offer us and then you'll receive the information and how that's a one question and then how often do we get feedback from the city planning agency with regards to submissions uh yes there is a direct hyperlink so we uh, we create the form and then there's uh it produces a shareable link that you can distribute however um post it wherever in newsletters etc um and then we can sort of update you as frequently as you feel is useful. Um, it, our experience this year was that we were running surveys for a couple community boards sort of later in the submission cycle. And so we were doing more frequent updates where typically once a week there would be, if there was a substantial increase in the number of responses, we would uh, give an update on the, hey, there were this many responses in the last week. Um, here's what new information we've gleaned from those new responses or, hey, there weren't that many this week, but we'll you know check in again next week. Um, if we were opening the survey earlier in the year where maybe we've got, you know, several months of community input being collected, uh, then it might be, you know, more scattered to sort of allow for more responses to come in so that the changes that we're recording in those and in, in that analysis is more significant. Um, but that's something that, you know, we can sort of discuss and tailor to uh, what we think is most useful for the board. Okay. And like the distribution of the survey, is that more solely on us or like, do you have like our, your own method of distributing it to, you know, the community? Uh, distribution would be the board's responsibility. Um, we would just manage the back end of the actual form building and then the 
an analytics side of the responses that come in. Um, but we essentially just give you the link that any, you know, anyone would use to click and access and fill out the survey. And then that can be, we, we've, we've had boards, you know, post on websites, uh, email blasts, routine newsletters, um, you know, LinkedIn meeting materials, you know, there's a, you know, as, as many options as the day is long for however you want to get that out there. And then, and then you could also, you know, uh, it wouldn't, have the same impact in terms of if you printed the survey also for people to collect that obviously wouldn't get the analytics back to us the same way um but if you were interested in you know, if you had an in-person community board meeting that you wanted to provide paper surveys at yes. just to supplement the online version then you could also offer a printed version and you would just have to sort of spin both plates but um yeah really uh the the world is, is your oyster as far as uh, survey distribution goes do you have a uh like a QR code that like people can scan and just get access to. to I don't that. believe that the system has a QR generator built into it, but I it's something we could look into as an option for. I, I don't see why any link couldn't probably. I, I would have to imagine these days you can probably get a QR code for just about anything. So uh, definitely a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I think that both um, the online version and then at our full board meetings, we could print the um, the actual hard copy and then just mail it in. Um, understand, I, I guess, right? There would be a mail in option or a scan option that we can scan it into you and, and send it to you. Um, and then, you know, also just providing just access across the board to those that may not have, you know, um, access to a computer or, or or whatnot. So I think that that's super important. Um, I think um, I I believe my questions were answered. Oh, one one more thing, and I know Katie um, Jeremy did ask about this. I know our cover page um, still says um, I believe it says um, 2022, and I am um, Katie. Um, I want to just um, just bring this up because I know that um, you had mentioned in the email um, that sometimes the cover page is an issue, and until the final reports come out next year, we can't update mm -hmm. the date. So I just want for good measure just to kind of put it out there just so that um, our community knows that we inquired about it um, and the reason why it hasn't been updated. Um, yeah. yeah, so this is this is a, um, you know, you'll you'll notice as you work in the, the website that we have, there are some, it's an older system and, and just there are some, I don't want to say glitches, but some things we have to be patient with. Um, and one of the known issues is that we just didn't, correctly reprogram the fiscal year in the in the cover um it it everything you submitted this year was a request for fiscal 2024 and if you look throughout the website it says fiscal 2024 on the top and bottom um and all the other content except for that logo on the um on the cover page the other thing i want to make clear is that um the version that you printed um or that you were able to access after submitting is still we consider a draft um, uh, there are a couple of reasons for this. One is that like OMB is still reviewing the, the requests and making sure they're distributed to the correct agencies. Um, we don't want just, um, by the fault of the, um, you know, the person filling out the form, you know, not realizing that this is something that should go to, uh, DOT instead of, uh, New York City Transit Authority, for example. Um, we, we take the opportunity to to redirect those to make sure they all get appropriate responses. So that's something that could be like an edit at the end. Um, and that's why um, you get a, a draft printed. Here's what you submitted and that's for your reference. And you can, you know, we recommend distributing it internally um, just for your own awareness. But in terms of anything that's going to go like up on your website and be more of a permanent document, we recommend holding off until, uh, you know, a couple of months from now when DCP actually has uh, had a chance to produce a well formatted version of each report that doesn't include like the, the instructions that came in the, the version that you already had access to it has a much nicer cover page um, you can actually see um, each of your um, recent past years reports here let me share my uh, screen again um, I'll just share the whole thing um, uh, this I was just clicking through our community uh, community profiles uh, and seeing this is last year's 
most of fiscal 23 was what you submitted last year. Fiscal 24 was this year, but we do have this year's published uh, or last year's published. It was published in December 2021. We have a few updates we want to make, so we don't think we're going to publish them in December. It'll be a, another month. We're predicting January, uh, but when those are ready, they'll be available online. And this version, I think you can see if you saw the other version, just looks a lot nicer. It's a lot cleaner. Again, it doesn't include the instructions. Um, and it's much more heavily content that was provided by your community board. So this is all your content. Um, so we do recommend if there's if you're um, you know planning to put something on your website, holding off until we have this nice clean version. Um, and we do apologize that you know if there was a purpose that you had you needed for the draft that there is an error and it's just um, that that fiscal year that's labeled um, in the version you have now. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. This is really insightful. Um, I am sure and certain that uh, there will be requests to have you come back again. That's fine. Yeah. Um, Happy and we really appreciate that. Um, I don't have any questions for now. Do you? No, I don't. I just do want to say I, if whoever has access to the chat, um, I put two helpful links in there. One is an overview page um, that essentially covers all the information that I um, that I went through in my presentation in one web page and then goes a little farther. So maybe good to bookmark. Um, and then the other one is one of those links on that page is actually the that paper version or print version of the survey. Um, so if you already want to start using that, you're more than welcome to. Um, but if you know, it sounds like you're interested in the Microsoft Firm survey, so we should follow up with with Jeremy uh, perhaps in the next couple of weeks to just set up a meeting to make sure we all are on the same page about the content and the timing of that. Sounds great. That's good. I had one. Uh, thanks, Katie, and thanks, Nick, for for, for all this. I have one um, sort of unrelated comment, but maybe just good for you all to know is, as you know, um, the Department of City Planning has been working for the last couple of years on a project that also takes place in your community district, Community District 11, uh, the Bronx Metro North Station Area Study. And we'll send out more information to be distributed through your community board to all your uh, members of the community, and we'll reach out on social media. But I just wanted to announce that in two weeks from now, we have two um sort of public uh information sessions about uh about the project about bronx metro north uh, just to share more information the mta will be there as well about the proposed stations at morris park and also nearby uh, the future station at park chester van nest um, i will send out more information as i said uh, that can be distributed uh, through all your uh channels that you use and and for instance on facebook and so on, uh, but I just wanted to point out that there's uh, there's an event um, Tuesday evening on uh, the 13th, as well as Thursday the 15th in the afternoon. Um, we just wanted to uh, we spread out the times a little bit to give everyone an opportunity to uh, to attend. But again, I'll I'll share more information with the with the board for further uh, distribution. Thank, Thank you. you. I think we have a question in the, yeah. in the chat. Um, can you like to ask a question? Well, the question is on um, that I think Jimmy is asking if you're also involved with the Jacoby Just Homes project. Uh, no, I am not, and the Department of City Planning is not involved with the with the Just Homes project. How come? Um, Sorry. the reason the reason for that is that um, the Department of City Planning uh, focuses uh, its efforts on. Um, ULERP, a uniform land use uh, review procedure, um, and this type of project, the, the just home uh, project, does not need that kind of review and kind of approval. So they don't need to go to the Department of City Planning and the City Planning Commission to get that proposed project approved. So we don't have a role in in that project and are not reviewing um, what is proposed. So basically, it's just a project that's being put on the table without any city planning it's just hand delivered there are certain uh, uh like public facilities uh or uh, from supportive housing in this case that do not need to go to city planning commission for for approval i don't understand there are certain uh within the city there are a lot of different agencies um, and for certain projects, those agencies that are not the Department of City Planning do not need to go 
through the Department of City Planning for approvals for specific kinds of projects. Um, and that's why I think it's the, the Department of Housing Preservation and Development is leading that initiative. And um, they, they are in charge of that and follow another uh, procedure to get it all reviewed and approved. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, so um, do we move on to the gallery session? I mean, that was it, right? Yes. Well, okay, yes. <laughs> so old business. Um, there really isn't um, old business. I think this is all started with new business. Our old business we covered, and that was the submission of the budget um, that we talked about in detail, and that was submitted October 31st on time. And as far as new business is concerned, we just wanted to share with the uh, committee and, and the community that our next meeting is December 19th. Um, also, if you, for any reason, need to contact us, Please contact us through the uh, CB11 website under the contact tab, and that's www.nyc.gov slash CB11, and you can um, contact us directly, or you can always, you know, call the office as well. Um, and I think that's it for today's first committee meeting of 2022. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for attending. Thank you for all the information. Right. Thanks for having us. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Good evening. Good evening.